Grüezi ragazzi, benvenuti, benvenuti, welcome. Uh, here we are today, a group of Italians from a uh, different part of the Mediterranean, uh, just uh, for this back to school session. Last session was uh, super nice, was more uh, German side of, uh, of this company, but today it was really, really important actually to be able to have this second part of this conversation we have here today. Uh, Dr. Davide Fortin has already been one of our speakers in a previous live. Welcome back again. He's an economist, a PhD from Sorbonne University. He's currently working at Maxey University and Barcelona Institute of Global Health. Uh, welcome back again, Davide Fortin. And I'm obviously here with Fabio Turco. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation, Viola and Fabio. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Obviously, I'm here to remind you that Cannabiscentia is a scientific company. So amongst seeing our face every Tuesday and giving, providing a series of updates here in this uh, channel, whether you're watching this now online, live, or uh, afterwards on YouTube, uh, you know that we have been supporting the industry uh, for basically spreading and, and bridging the gap of uh, knowledge, the knowledge gap that there is in the industry, especially uh, between industry and then um, actual market activated into hospitals and then pharmacies and so on. Today, we are touching on a topic that we felt was um, pretty important to be touching back on, especially considering that we just had a change of regulation in, in Italy, touching CBD. And uh, as I said at the beginning of the live, we both share this nationality, but also Davide has been actually running studies in Italy on the topic of CBD. So who was better, best to talk about this topic today? Uh, before we even touch the whole CBD in Italy and how this is going to change uh, the the perspective for the country. I'd like to just uh, start with a easy but probably a huge question for Davide and uh, perhaps could set the scenario for later um, on simply how have you seen and how can we see the prices of the market changing as um, legalization, as the states change uh, with the process of legalization of cannabis and how do these two components so com regulations and prices kind of like go together or are they completely unrelated hello yes and um, this is a very good question uh, obviously uh, legalization uh, has an effect uh, on the demand side which is what people are more concerned because people think maybe it's going to increase use in a way that makes people more problematic users but actually the, the most uh, significant effect of legalization is on the supply side so on the side of the producer because actually they can uh, produce uh, without uh, with, with full legitimacy and so they can also produce with some scale so that's uh, the case uh, we will look at is the case of Colorado because with MPG Consulting, there is uh, the consulting uh, firm that I work in Colorado and that we, we, we whom I advise governments uh, in, in different countries. We have been working uh, for a, a review of the data from the, for the Colorado uh, Marijuana Enforcement Division, look at the agency created for the legalization. And so, yeah, we will look at some data uh, about prices. So maybe I'll, I'll go directly to the part specifically about prices. Um, so here, sorry, can you, oh my God, it's a bit slow. Okay, so here, I don't know if you can see, this is the average price per gram of flour and shake trim. So the trim is basically the part that uh, with, uh, this, that are, is not like the entire bud, but it's just like uh, uh, some leaf and uh, the, um, the flour when it's broken. Oh. Yes, um, and what, what, you, what you can see here, you see uh, the green lines rela are related to the medical market and the uh, light blue for the recreational. And we see that uh, in terms of uh, uh, price uh, trend, there is a stabilization after three or four years of the legalization because um, 
the supply is basically able to understand what the demand and the produce based on the demand. So at the beginning, there is not enough production because the supply maybe has some problem. They are learning also how to supply the market. And we see this is mostly happening in the recreational market in this case, because the, the license for the production recreational were actually given in 2014. So it was very new. And so there was issues in the production. While for the medical market, the green, the um, price change is much uh, lower. So we see that the price is actually lower in general, but it uh, lowers much lo more slowly because the medical market was actually uh, operating before the recreation. So about 2011 and 12, they were already licensing for a uh, medical producer. So it depends, in, it's always like three, four years from the actual low, we see a stabilization of price. And what is interesting is, and, we, I have data now, more new, uh, so that I can show you here, but that from 2020 and 2021, we see actually that uh, the prices are, go are going back up a little bit, you know. So they stabilize and actually at some point, because the demand maybe grow more than what the, the supply is expecting, there might be actually an, a small increase on this in the market price. So this is the case we see in a regulated market where producer, uh, to be a producer, you are required to have a license. So the case in Europe is like is slightly different because we don't have, uh, I mean, for CBD at least, uh, we don't have this uh, licensing system. So the market is a little bit more free to go up and down and perhaps this will create um, supply shock a little bit different. So it might be going down much faster and then goes up also faster. It could happen uh, because of this lack of uh, regulation totally, but uh, um, you know, that, that's something that we might see, but because the market for um, CBD has now like maybe four or five years of maturity, let's say, like even though it's not legal, but it's uh, like, it's not fully legal, it's, uh, but, I mean, it's not regulated, but it's legal, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, there might be, you know, some balancing of the prices eventually for flowers. Now we look also at the uh, prices for um, concentrates, which is, a very small uh, share of the market in Europe at the moment. But we see also concentrates, which means the extracted part from the plant that uh, can be used for, to use in vape pens or actually smoke directly with the flower or ingest it as oil or use. So this uh, um, has also had a, a dr price drop, but this was a little bit longer, uh, as you can see, uh, the drop, um, because, you know, the, this is... Uh, uh, something that is harder to produce, there is less uh, people that are able to supply it. So the, the market is a little bit reacting slow in a slower way to the, um, to the, pro like the production is a bit slower and uh, yeah, the market uh, reacting different ways. Uh, so that's, that's the market for concentrates, which we, we see is uh, also like stable for uh, uh, 2019 and 20. And here, what is interesting is the market for edibles which has a, a bit of a different uh, trend because actually the market for edibles, the average um, price for the edibles has been always kind of stable. It was it has not had this sort of shift. And this is probably because uh, the edibles market is, uh, um, is less of a commodity compared to the flowers or concentrates, but it's more like a market that works uh, 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 you, we can say more like wine or like uh, um, <clears throat> other product where like certain product keeps to be very expensive because they're harder to produce. You need like some know-how to to make good uh, good edibles, uh, you know. So there are like restaurants uh, that are very expensive and restaurants that are cheap. And on average, it seems like the market appreciates mostly the expensive stuff perhaps. And that's why the market is more stable because if you go too cheap, but the quality of your product is very low that people are not interested and so this there is less of a market threshold because the the consumer are, are more looking at the quality actually um so yeah and also there is also to say yeah there is uh, that the average THC content per edible increased also so that's also probably is part of the fact that the um so that for the cost structures stay more stable also for that reason. But in general, the edibles are more of an interesting market, more of a niche, and are less affected by prices because they can create some sort of monopoly for specific edibles so that the competition is smaller and is uh, uh, the consumers uh, like this. So there's less of a price competition and more of a quality quantity.
competition, uh, what we could call in economics actually terms. So this could be actually what will happen in the CBD market, and perhaps yeah, the edibles market would be less affected by uh, price pressure. Uh, I mean, we don't have really price for any of this except maybe for flowers. We have some type of uh, information, and yeah, has been they have been dropping like. Uh, uh, of more of a strong, like large magnitude, but this is probably something that uh, uh, will change actually in the next uh, uh, few years as the market adjusts to the demand and the uh, suppliers uh, are going to be, the, like some supply will be out from the market and only the ones that are able to manage to keep, uh, um, to play at these prices right now, they can survive actually. So that's, yeah, that's probably what will happen. But I mean, it's, the regulation will definitely affect this market a lot because uh, the, if, if you perhaps apply some quality uh, requirements like quality control for uh, heavy metals or for uh, adulterants in general, that will also uh, increase the market because there will be only some some co some companies will be able to uh, not everyone will be able to provide product with this. Uh, uh, with low adulterants, so the market will definitely uh, increase the price and the consumer will be consuming better product. But uh, we haven't seen any country, any governments in Europe that was interested in that at this moment. So um, this shock will might not arrive in the uh, very short term. But yeah, we will we, we yeah. for to see. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fortin, for this very uh, articulated uh, answer. And so, remaining on the market of uh, CBD, um, just to provide insight to our, our audience into the current regulatory uh, landscape, uh, landscape for CBD products in Europe, uh, we have to talk about Italy, because uh, we know that the uh, Italian government uh, uh, have issued a new decree uh, that uh, aim to set the CBD uh, oil uh, as a narcotic uh, substances. Namely, they um, this decree uh, say that the composition for oral administration uh, of cannabidiol for uh, obtained from cannabis uh, has been uh, must be set to as a narcotic. So. Um, we know that before this uh, decree, in Italy, CBD was sold as a full uh, supplement, but now uh, with the, this current uh, regulation, CBD will be only sell uh, into pharmacy. So uh, can, could you tell us how this decree, this regulation uh, impacted the economics of CBD in the Italian market and if this can have also some impact uh, to the rest of uh, Europe? Well, the the impact uh, at the moment I can uh, give like my opinion like uh, on this because the impact might be huge or maybe might not be followed by other country. It's hard to say how other country will react. But on, in general, for cannabis and CBD, uh, the country that has been mostly doing uh, uh, creating like a precedent and creating like a, a low sort of uh, reference has been more like the French situation because the French were more, more aggressively also in like take in in the market from the beginning so and also the German in certain way and uh, I, so but perhaps also Italy could have an impact but this one is more of a choice to say what the really impact will be at the European level from an economic point of view the impact would be massive uh, well in two ways I mean first in terms of supply uh, the fact that we will uh, uh, ask for that because the product will be sold in pharmacy the requirements should be like quite high i assume uh, i'm not really i didn't really look at at actually what the decree imposed GMP only. <clears throat> so yeah so just already starting yeah. from this we will definitely have uh, um, a market that will be very much more concentrated few players will be able to play this game to, to extract uh, um, cannabis product and if the GMP is the requirement, also there would be a strong economic incentive to actually produce economic, uh, produce uh, uh, cannabis or uh, CBD oil, uh, starting from isolated um, and I, using isolate because of the price right now. So it means that actually the product that will be provided to the consumer will be actually less effective if we uh, believe the, the entourage effect, which I think we have some evidence right now to believe, and, but you know much more than I do on that. So this will probably create an incentive to go through isolates, which we have been, have been less effective. But also um, 
it will also uh, sort of lower the potential for uh, Italian company to actually export abroad because uh, because of this competition that will be much lower. There will be a lower innovation. Uh, so there will be like a lower creation of new product and product development. So this will uh, um, deter like also like new player from entering this market because uh, because yeah because there is there is going to be already some player that are managing uh, this I mean the market from the top they can they can do like cartels it's going to be much easier to do cartels so that to deter new players because uh, pharmacy are like if I, having a single distributor, there is not a competition of any other retailer. So yeah, there will be much less innovation and much less potential for export in overall terms. Uh, but from the point of view of consumer, uh, it would be also much more uh, complicated to, to buy the product because obviously in pharmacy, the price will be higher. Um, there will be a less differentiation of product. So uh, what we are seeing, for instance, in the US, we see a lot of, well, in, in North American markets, which are regulated where CBD is sold um, uh, with regulations, like uh, we will not be able to, there will be much less of, of uh, a prop, new product that maybe mix other plants and they do synergy, synergy with other plants. So because of, also because of the pharmacy, I have actually limited space that they can provide to CBD oil. They cannot take away from other medication. So the consumer will be lost, worse off in terms of product quality and it will be more difficult to find the product that fits this problem and that uh, has the better balance yeah. and benefit and cost. And the cost will be higher because the cost will be higher. I mean, someone could say, okay, but this way we will not have uh, oil that are um, not uh, badly done because it's going to be all GMP. But, I, but, but this will take away also all the all, uh, some oil that are actually good and maybe are more effective than the other one. Uh, and just and just because you decide that you don't want to do testing and sampling and and create like some regulation on uh, adulterants for oil, so uh, this decision to just <laughs> take it, take them all away because everything everything else is bad and all the GMP is good, uh, why you could just test actually the product? I think it's uh, uh, really um, not efficient. Uh, yeah, so it's not efficient. Also, because uh, this decree is based on the fact, uh, on the supposed fact that the CBD uh, is uh, a narcotic. We know from uh, scientific literature that this is uh, not true, and uh, this has, uh, uh, you were saying, uh, will uh, give more difficulty to people to access uh, CBD, even because uh, to buy CBD from pharmacy you need a medical prescription, and so it's not easy to obtain. But now my question is, why, according to you, not from a scientific point of view, but from a, an economic point of view, why Italian government decided to do this regulation? There is something good <laughs> they may rely on or nothing? So I, I feel, I think from my point of view, the pressure comes from a product that might be substituted from a CBD oil. So in a way, like all these uh, medications that uh, we have like kind of an evidence right now that uh, I, I myself looking in Italy, I have an evidence that CBD oil are, uh, I mean, looking at the French market in this case, because in Italy we didn't have enough that were using CBD oil. But from my survey, we see that CBD oil are the product is mostly used for substituting other medications. So those yeah. that, so while people that smoke uh, or inhale, CBD flour they use mostly to substitute tobacco or cannabis with high THC. The CBD oil are those that are mostly used to substitute other medications. So to lower the market for CBD oil to try to restrict this is gonna definitely uh, provide an advantage to other medication. And we know that pharmaceutical companies have uh, some strong power in lobbying, and so they can definitely work on that on one side. And on the other, maybe there is also like some some people that some producer of CBD oil right now that have reached the a GMP quality requirement, and that uh, would prefer not to have a competition from other players, and to be able to, you know, to make sure that his investment for the GMP is paid by having a sort of monopoly or oligopoly on the, on the market. So these two, I think, are the most interested uh, player to change the law in this way. But obviously, we are we are also in a historical moment politically where the Italian uh, government is quite reactionary. In theory, although we cannot see that all the policies are reactionary because some is, uh, I mean, this is a very also <laughs> democratic, like also, uh, what do you say? Um, it's a very political um, argument, but very can we say that, so this decree is a kind of present to pharmaceutical industries? 
I, that, I mean, I think they are the one that will benefit the most. <laughs> Definitely not for the consumers or the patients of that. Yeah. So these are, these are not, not the, the um, yeah. I mean, yeah, let's in, not forget that uh, this decreed yeah. was anyway from 2020, especially year in which Italy, I think, opened up to a lot of really good relationship towards pharma. So, and, and the, at the time, health ministry, which is the, the, the one who actually wrote this decree that we are now implementing now, um, has been doing quite a lot of actions that has been gifting uh, quite a lot of revenue towards Big Pharma. Um, but without having to go that far in completism, I am quite interested because we don't have a lot of time in those lives and that uh, is such an interesting topic. You just mentioned that you were comparing and contrasting data in between for, from your survey in between Italy and France. And I would love to touch on this topic as well because now France is actually um, starting to be in a different place with the whole conversation on cannabis. There are voices of a new tender coming out and, and I think um, perhaps we can get some key take home message from your survey as well, a survey on the comparison of the perception of CBD in these two uh, bordering country, yet so different on how they're working around cannabis. Yes. So uh, from uh, the survey that we have, we, are, we have this, uh, this article that is going to be published by the end of the year. Uh, in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs, and that uh, is called Therapeutic Use and Other Reason to Consume CBD Inside from French and Italian Context. So this uh, this is, I'm looking mostly at the therapeutic use of CBD and what uh, uh, increased the use. And I mean, when it's going to be published, I will send you so you can look at it very well. But uh, what is mainly found between Italy and France at this time is that there is a much higher medical use of CBD in France than in Italy in 2020. And this is simply because there is no medical cannabis market in the U in France. So okay. the only way for them to have a product that is sort of legal because it's not well regulated as well, it was to buy in CBD shop CBD. So there is much more people in France that are using CBD for medical reasons just because they have no other option. And a lot of people that are using it because of much more because of a doctor that prescribed them to go and buy a CBD oil in a shop. So that's a very, that's already a big, uh, um, one of the first uh, insights. But in terms of the reason why it is used medically, we see that uh, in France, in Italy, we have more people in percentage of those using it medically that are using it for sleep. So these are the main one and stress compared to France. But on the contrary, in France, we have more people using it for pain and inflammation. Just to say, because it's kind of more medical, so the, the, the physician tends to prescribe also CBD more from pain and inflammation. I think that's what's derived. Then we see as a fourth more used uh, um, uh, medical condition uh, is to improve anxiety, depression, or mood disorders. And this is more uh, in Italy than in France. Then we yeah. have uh, um, relief from headache, which was surprisingly like... Uh, we have like about 30% of the Italian medical users that are using for headache, uh, about... 15% in France. Then we have, interestingly, the other two are mostly related to uh, productivity, actually. And is mostly used in, France, in Italy for increased concentration and for increased the energy. Um, then we have the many, many reasons related to the reduction of uh, other substances. So in Italy, the most used substance is, is, is tobacco. So you reduce 30%, 35, they want to reduce tobacco. Um, then also, uh, and then in France is more, Instead for reducing cannabis, we have about 10%, uh, 12% reducing cannabis. Uh, um, and then we have for similarly used for broken bones. So people that got like an accident or nausea and vomiting. And also a little, a little bit less than 10% for alcohol use. And a little one also for improved skin, pro uh, skin problem. Uh, but obviously skin problem is very small because at this time there was actually not really a lot of uh, transdermic uh, um, or cosmetic or uh, topical uh, product with CBD, which seems to be more effective for skin problems. So that also depends on the product that is sold. Uh, but, uh, um, but this is uh, very relevant. We have like- Did you like, compare um, also the demographics, sorry, between the two countries? Yes, oh, I mean, goodness. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, we have <laughs> just like <laughs> now curiosity. And by the way, uh, anyone following that wants to use this last five minutes to get some good questions in, we have David Fortin here for the second live. So let's uh, use wisely his time. <laughs> so, um, 
so what we see is that the education level uh, is actually uh, uh, affected. I mean, to, to have a job, for instance, uh, lower uh, the chance to, uh, for some reason, to use, uh, to use CBD for a medical reason. So I think it could be it's an interesting finding. Um, then uh, we have uh, uh, other other things. I mean, the frequency of use it's much related, very strongly related to the medical use. So people that use it every day, obviously, they have much more of a medical uh, more chance to use it medically. In both countries, Italy and France, we see that. Um, so and then uh, we see that sublingual oil is much related but like very strong magnitude with medical use in both Italy and France. So actually sublingual oil is uh, very much used for medical reasons compared to th those that use it for with flowers. Vaporization is also increased, like to be, to be vaporizing flowers is much increased with a chance to uh, use CBD for medical reason. And cosmetic, of course, also is much related. We don't find a lot of other um, Things that are related to the medical use because that was ah uh, yeah of course the age uh, to be woman to be a woman also increase the chance to use it medically um, and age of course the older you are the more problem you have so the more chance to use it medically as well but uh, um, but yes the these are the, the main issue the main thing we found related is yeah this one also. yeah there was some data about uh, medical prescription how how many prescriptions are yes. made in Italy compared as to I, France as as I was mentioning before we have like uh, um, about uh, uh, people that uh, uh, like people that improve symptoms of, of a disease diagnosed by a physician is about twenty five percent in French, and in Italy is about twelve percent. So the people that oh, got uh, that improved because of this, so it's about half, as I said. And this is because there was the the physician; they don't have another option. They don't have a pharmacy that they can send the patient. So yeah, but uh, what is more interesting for what we are seeing is that. They are really trying to yeah to bring this sublingual oil in pharmacy, which is something I totally understand, and I think I can see that pharmacy are gonna sell this product, especially if they are GMP and if they are sold with isolate because it's the most similar to the allopathic medicine concept because it's very standardized. But why to stop to allow to don't allow people to find other type of product, full spectrum, mix with other plants and in synergy in the in the specialized shop, and let the patient to choose and just do like samples like uh, analysis of testing of some samples to be sure that the product are have no contaminants i mean from an economic point of view it makes no sense you know it's you're like restricting the product i mean but anyways there's a lot of things yeah i <laughs> wanted to share a comment of uh, michele rizzini he says the problem in italy uh, is that all the cbd oils which is not true they're all because it's a generalization we cannot do uh we're sold as cosmetic products and he suggests that um, this was a massive, so that this decree perhaps came out as uh, to, to try and solve this massive scam that was going on. As I trained many of the pharmacies that uh, are um, selling cannabis in Italy, I can testify that that's, uh, of course, there are people that are doing frauds everywhere in the world, but as rightly so, uh, Fabio Turco wrote, uh, actually, as an official reply of Cannabiscienza um, for this new decree, the fact that someone is violating a law uh, shouldn't be the justification to take out a product from the shelf. So we just reminded how years ago, actually, in Italy, there was a problem with um, wine. And, and of course, uh, we're not made illegal wines just because a few wine sellers were having uh, toxic uh, um, toxic levels. Uh, of so methanol in wine. Levels of toxic, of methanol. So uh, I think really this is, should be the point, as uh, David said, it uh, should be more about uh, more controls. And of course, we know that there are some pharmacies that are buying uh, CBD that should be going for a cosmetic market and have been using those for compounding medications. And of course, we understand that there is a massive difference in price. Um, and so, of course, it's a fraud. But uh, again, we don't feel that this should somehow justify uh, why taking out basically what's not only uh, from one side, obviously, a product from the market for anyone that wants to consume it, but at the same place, it's becoming like a really toxic uh, country 
for anyone owning a hemp company pretty much so um, this for me is like the saddest scenario um it i i feel and probably david is the best person to talk to about this that in italy we have way more companies that are producing hemp as a flower that can be then post-processed but as as a plant than companies that are producing active pharmaceutical ingredients so basically with this law we're once again favoring import of our medicines over uh, trying to support our national economy this this is my feel after years of of meeting new people that work in this industry most of the people in italy are actually working on the plant they don't work yeah, it, it is in contrast for what italy italian government uh, say every time that they want to protect uh, italian they say italy first but this decree is uh, the opposite and moreover is based on a uh, assumption that cbd is narcotic that is against everything we read since two tiers in the scientific literature. So maybe something uh, must be done uh, to solve this problem. Yeah, yeah. if, if I can say one thing is uh, like, as how the CBD market was developed, it was uh, basically uh, the supplier found ways to lower the risk. And so this fact that they, they classify a product that is used to be eaten like uh, as a cosmetic, it's just a way to shift responsibility from the product to the consumer. Yeah. But this is normal when the market is not regulated and you have no other option to be safe as a supplier, then you create, uh, then you classify it in a way that uh, the product is going to go to the consumer. But this is because the market is better regulated from the beginning and better designed. And I've been seeing this in a lot of markets, a lot of places of the world. But in Italy, like in four years that the first decree was given, you know, i was expecting to see a report or anything, you know, to decide, you know, to study this subject, you know, and it's not like last week that uh, they came out, but nothing, there's nothing that was explained, nothing that explained what is the reasoning, the rationale. So uh, I think they don't want to study or, yeah, they are not interested in, like, in other subjects to be, like, scientific and to be, like, uh, um, to have, like, a solid uh, approach. But, uh, yeah, this is probably propaganda and most probably, I think, there's going to be some sort of um, escape. I think that uh, we will find maybe CBD oil uh, sold as CBD for, for dogs or for like, I don't know how they're going to escape, but I just don't see this as something that in the long term will be able, they will be able to control. I might be wrong, you know, but even in Canada where they have a, lo a big, large legal market, the most, a lot of people buy the illegal the CBD oil that is produced in the US uh, without a license. So, I think it's going to happen the same, and they're going to probably buy it from Czech Republic, which is the only country right now in Europe, and maybe in the world, I'm not sure, that create, that put a specific law protecting people that transform hemp in their narcotic law. And that's the only way that you can be like protected as a supplier when you have the narcotic law that talk about transformation of, of CBD and hemp. And that's why everybody is, I mean, most people go there if they don't go to Switzerland. But uh, yeah, apart from that, I think uh, we're going to see what happens and I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to, to see if they will change the idea and maybe in five days or in one week they will retire the decree, but I'm uh, a little bit skeptical. Okay, thank you, Davide. We are getting this. to, thank you, Davide. Sorry, we are getting to the end of it. It's, uh, I was uh, scrolling through some of the hello that came literally from every part of the world. So thanks a lot, everyone. I know it was short, but that's what it is. Half an hour, we're going to meet back again next Tuesday with actually a class on phytocannabinoids, a free class in here live. So thanks again. And Davide, we keep in touch with your publication. So maybe also a third round with you. Thank you. Always illuminating. Have a good day, guys. Thank you for the time and uh, the interesting question. Goodbye. See you next week. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.